Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is Sunday, July 11th, 2021. Let's talk about a betting strategy for the NBA Finals after the first two games. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, the point of this video, some people complain that we're on both sides of the play, right? That's exactly the point. What you're trying to do is you're trying to have a position, right? But should that position fail, you want to hedge. So your losses, if any, are minimized. Or you win and profit either way. So right now, in the NBA Finals, after two games, played in Phoenix, and understand I'm old school, I believe the series doesn't start until a road team wins. Phoenix is a minus 470 to win the entire thing. A minus 470, right? Well, let me just say, uh, let's try to get better odds than that. If you believe Phoenix is going to win the NBA Finals, right? Understand in game one, Chris Paul had over 30 points. Chris Paul is shooting the basketball at a better percentage than is Devin Booker, right? Somebody else on the Phoenix Suns who is plausible as an MVP candidate, right? So, right here, rather than pay a minus 470, if you believe Phoenix is going to win, you're two games in to the NBA Finals right now, and you're still getting a minus 154, right? Considerably better than a minus 470. You're getting a minus 154 on Chris Paul to win Finals MVP, right? That's the primary bet here. Chris Paul at a minus 154 to win the finals MVP. But let's throw out two picks as a hedge. Now there has to be a hole in the hedge or numerically it won't make sense. So here's the risk involved. We're not gonna pick Devin Booker as a candidate, right? Booker's going off at a plus 175. You're going to have to leave something on the table if you're going to make the numbers work. Rather, the hedge for me is multifold. First, would it shock you, even after he scored over 40 points in game two, would it shock you to learn that right now, having not lost a home game yet in the NBA Finals, that you're getting a plus 400 on Giannis to win the MVP, right? I believe after the games Giannis had, the first two games, right? The first game we all said, wow, he's moving a lot better than we thought he would coming back from injury. The second game we thought, wow, this third quarter is historical, right? I believe if the Bucks win, chances are absent an injury absent someone else going for 70 points. Giannis is going to win the MVP. That's if the Bucks come back, if the Bucks win four of the next five games. So the hedge on Chris Paul at a minus 154 would be Giannis at a plus 400. Now let's throw out three other plays that I believe numerically are possible because of the long odds you're getting. Another hedge, right? You want to have Chris Paul minus 154. You want to have Giannis at plus 14, excuse me, at plus 400. You know what? If you look at the numbers that DeAndre Ayton had in game one, shooting percentage, rebounding, right? Spectacular numbers. You understand that there is an outside possibility 
that Aiton might win finals MVP. Right? Chris Paul is clearly the favorite. Devin Booker is a force. Right? Devin Booker is a guy who has scored over 70 points in an NBA game. Right? He is a force. But right now, the Bucks don't seem to have an answer for Aiton. And the reason Aiton's important, right, the reason we're including him in the betting portfolio here is the casino is giving you a plus 1800 on him to win finals MVP. Right? That's after. That's after. Grabbing a lot of boards and shooting at an extremely high percentage. Let me also point out, too, that there is a scenario where Aiton plays defense against Giannis, stops Giannis. I'm not saying this happens. I'm just saying it's a possibility. Is viewed as an invaluable defensive stopper and saves the day for Phoenix. Right? So I believe, right, the second part of your hedge on Chris Paul, minus 154, to win the NBA Finals MVP is Aiton at plus 1,800. In other words, right now, the two hedges we have are Giannis plus 400. Folks, if Milwaukee wins games three and four, you're never going to see a plus 400 again on Giannis. And Aiton plus 1,800. Now here, there are two more moves I'm going to make. I know people are saying, how many parts of this hedge could there be? Well, these odds mandate it. Right, folks? If you followed the box, you understand that a key ingredient to their sauce is Chris Middleton. You also understand that Middleton, at times, can literally take over games. Right? You might recall him doing that in the Atlanta Hawks series. Right? Well, let's be real here. Throw a dollar on Chris Middleton at plus 8,000. Folks, it's a casino mispricing. The casino is giving you 80 to 1 odds on Middleton to win the MVP. Understand, so many things could happen. Right? Two games in Milwaukee where Middleton is comfortable. If Middleton is the man getting over 30 points per night, if Giannis's knee flares up or Giannis is ineffective and they take him off the court at key times and Middleton takes over, let's remember, Giannis is not the most accomplished free throw shooter. Let's remember, Giannis is not the most accomplished three-point shooter. Then Chris Middleton at 80-1, to one, right, could save the entire hedge. Right? 80 to 1. Understand, at those odds, you could bet a bit on Chris Paul to win MVP. You can bet some on Giannis at 4 to 1 to win MVP. Right? And still make a profit off a very marginal bet. Very low amount bet on Chris Middleton to win MVP if he turns it around the last five, four to four, five games of the series. I agree, for Middleton to win, Milwaukee's going to have to come back. Understand, Milwaukee has not yet lost a home game in the NBA Finals. Let's throw out another outlier hedge. Again, the odds are so compelling that whether or not you believe it's going to happen, just understand the situation makes it possible that it can happen. The guy who's now sticking, Chris Paul, right? A key player, in my opinion, the leading candidate right now for NBA Finals MVP, right? The guy who's playing defense against him is one of the best perimeter defenders in the league. And, of course, he is the point guard of the Milwaukee Bucks. In other words, he's Milwaukee's equivalent of Chris Paul, right? Drew Holiday. 
So Drew's going to have the ball a lot. Not only that, people are going to look at his defense on Chris Paul, just like years ago. Andre Iguodala won the MVP because of his defense on LeBron James in an NBA Finals. Right? Would it shock you to know that right now you're getting 100 to 1 odds? I'm not making this up. 100 to 1 odds on Drew Holiday to be NBA Finals MVP. 100 to 1. So to me, let's talk about this whole betting portfolio. Your main bet is Chris Paul, minus 154, to win NBA Finals MVP. We're not going to touch Corey Booker because, excuse me, Devin Booker, simply because we have to leave a guy out to make the numbers work. Right? We're on both sides of the play as it is. You have to leave a guy out. You have to make a decision that a guy going off at some of the shortest odds isn't going to do it. So we're going to leave Devin Booker out. Right? You have Giannis plus 400. You understand if Milwaukee wins the two-time MVP winner, the former Defensive Player of the Year winner, the guy who's already scored over 40 in Game 2 in a historical third quarter, is likely to win the MVP. Right? Should he fail, I imagine Milwaukee's MVP is going to be Middleton or Holiday. You're getting them at 80 to 1 and 100 to 1. So even though we don't expect them to win NBA Finals MVP, as you structure your betting portfolio, throw one one hundredth of what you're betting, for example, on Drew Holiday. If lightning strikes and he wins the NBA Finals MVP, guess what, folks? You break even. That's betting one one hundredth of what you're betting on Drew Holiday because he's going off at a hundred to one odds. Right? Finally, on Phoenix, we're looking at Chris Paul. We're ignoring Devin Booker, right? In part because Chris Paul's in his mid-30s. He's a surefire Hall of Famer. We love him. He's corporate friendly. He has the State Farm ads, right? He's going to get the career appreciation vote, the good guy vote. Nothing against Devin Booker. It's just that we're going to reward the years of good guy reputation, the reservoir of goodwill that Chris Paul has accumulated. Right? So that's the way I'm playing it. Rather than pay a minus 470 on Phoenix to win the series, and understand, on who wins the series, I'm agnostic. In other words, I'm just trying to make a profit based on casino mispricings, right? I'm agnostic on that. Rather than pay a minus 470 on Phoenix to win the series here, especially when they haven't beaten Milwaukee in Milwaukee in the NBA Finals yet, right? Especially when the way they won game two was with a disproportionate number of threes at an unsustainable percentage, right? Rather than pay the minus 470, I'm going to pay the minus 154 on Chris Paul to win MVP. I'll add a plus 1,800. Think about how ridiculous those odds are. On DeAndre Ayton to win the MVP, that's on the Phoenix side of the ledger. I'm also going to take advantage of the 4-1 to one odds on Giannis to win MVP. In other words, I want to be hatched. If Milwaukee wins Game 3 and suddenly these odds change considerably, I want to be in a position, right? In a position where I can profit. Then, of course, the 80-1 to one odds on Chris Middleton, where I can bet 180th of what I'm betting on Chris Middleton and have a hedge on everything else. And the 100 to 1 odds on Drew Holiday. Understand, 
Holiday and Middleton are key parts of the box. Folks, they're starters. Understand an argument can be made that the team is really Chris Middleton's team, not Giannis's team, this postseason. Right? Again, look at the numbers. Right? The fact that the casino is giving me 80 to 1 odds on Middleton and 100 to 1 odds, right? Bet 1 one hundredth of what I'm betting on Drew Holiday to win MVP. And if he does, everything's hatched. I'm going to include that in the betting portfolio. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you, but understand the risk involved. If Devin Booker wins finals MVP, or if someone else, let's say Mikkel Bridges, who's been hot, continues the hot streak, and wins MVP over these bigger names, you lose it all. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.